I don't want to oversimplify Parrothood in the least as I compare acquiring a 3D printer to acquiring a newborn child. So today I want to share with you some of the experience I've gleaned in the last month of using a 3D printer that I hope will help you in making your transition to 3D printer parenthood a little easier. Considering getting a 3D printer? Do it! I think one of the great things about having a 3D printer is it keeps our minds elastic. That's it. Let's jump into a few of the things that will immediately prepare you for 3D printing parenthood. It takes way longer to print a 3D object than I had anticipated it would. Your watch stops time? Now there's a lot of variables that go into the print speed and print time, um, print detail and so forth, but suffice it to say, it takes a lot longer than I thought it would. I mistakenly believed that I would be able to just throw the model into the printer that I wanted to create, and within a handful of hours, I would have this perfect replica of the model that I wanted. So my handful of hours in some cases changed to 25 and 35 and 45 hours, depending on what I was trying to create. Knowing that now, I don't mind and I plan for the time that it takes to print and, that, and that's all right. Certainly I wish it would print faster, but that's where the technology is right now and I enjoy it. But one of the things I'll do then is I'll just send a print job to the printer, make sure that it's printing properly and then let it go and do its thing while I go to work or even go to sleep. And uh, I let it do the printing overnight. And uh, while I rest, it continues to produce. You might be asking yourself, well, how do I find things to print? If you already own a printer, I'm pretty certain that you've already heard of Thingiverse or Yegi. If you're new to 3D printing and just waiting for your printer to arrive or uh, just starting into it, be familiar with Yegi and uh, Thingiverse. And those are just a few. I share those two with you because they serve two different purposes. Thingiverse is a repository of thousands and thousands and thousands of files that you can use for printing. Yegi is different. It's not a repository. It's a search engine. It's the Google or Yahoo of 3D modeling. And so that's where you're going to go to search across all of the internet and find in the different resources and repositories the different models that, that um, are available to you. Know this, that there are, again, thousands and thousands, probably tens of thousands, maybe even millions of free models for you to print. Hey, what you got here that's free? All the items on MakerBot Thingiverse are free to download. However, you'll notice that when you click on an item to download it, it'll ask you, hey, do you want to leave a tip for this person? This is a great model in that it encourages designers to continue to create great models that we all benefit from. A uh, little more, please. It is free, right? Keep it coming. A little more. Come on, let's go. It's free. If you feel a desire, show some love, tip your desire. Now, there are many free ones, but there are also sites that you can subscribe to. A monthly subscription to some of these sites grants you access to thousands of models. In addition, other sites have lots of models, but you'll pay per piece. So you'll purchase that specific model. And once you purchase that model, you own that model to be able to print. Now that doesn't mean you own the copyright to that model. Most of these models, if they've been produced by somebody else, um, it's their model. And so it would be inappropriate for you and me to think, hey, you know what? I'm gonna start printing these models and selling them. It's not your model. And so these models are for your use or for giving away or whatever the case may be. But uh, these are other people's models that they're kind enough to share or to sell to you. That brings us to the next question. What do I print? It would be easy to begin and just start printing everything. There's value in looking at some things that teach you how to print, and there are lots of things online that will begin doing that. There are a lot of free models online that will teach you and your printer how to begin printing 3D models. You might find Benchies. A Benchie is a benchmark print that's usually a small print, and there's lots of them for free all over the internet, that will allow you to test your understanding as well as your, computer, your uh, 3D printer's capacity to print. It will test a lot of things in there, like the minuteness of a print, overhang, angles, curves, and so forth. And uh, so it's a great way to kind of introduce and get started into printing. There's also um, calibration cubes, which will show if your X, Y, and Z axes, which we'll talk about in a minute, are lined up properly. You'll also find bed leveling uh, models that will make sure that you've got your bed leveled. 
You may choose to add to your collection a temperature tower. The purpose of a temperature tower is to evaluate both your printer and your filament and how they perform together to print um, in increments of five degrees. So it, it dials in the best temperature to be printing at with your printer and your filament. Before your printer even arrives, go find some things that you're really interested in and, and start collecting them. Thingiverse and a lot of the other repositories of 3D models um, will have files that you can collect in various locations and you can label, the, um, label your collections different names so you can collect your different ideas just like Pinterest. For example, I found this before I even got my 3D printer and I thought, I have to print that. Similar to a new baby, um, people around you that care about you are going to want to see what this baby's like. My brother's father and many other people around me are quickly looking at uh, models to see, can you make this, can you make this? And so it's a good chance for me to not only be generous, but also to, it's a good way for me to begin practicing some other skills. As you're looking online for 3D model files, STL stands for Standard Template Library. That's the standard for a 3D model that you'll print. And it's like a PDF or an uh, Excel document. And so this file type is what we're going to look for to download and use in our, in our printer to be able to print an object. The other one you'll find, you might find a G code. The G code stands for geometric code. So what that will do is it will give a command to your printer to send it across the planes, X, Y, and Z planes of your printer to be able to move through the geometric universe. Here we go. To be able to create that file. So it sends the geometry, the movement, to your 3D printer. STL is the file of the 3D model. G code is the file of the 3D model broken into a geometric code telling your printer how to print it. A slicer is a software that is used to tell your printer how to take that STL and produce it in G code. We're creating the G code. And a slicer takes your model and literally goes through and slices every single layer that is necessary to produce this. It says, what does my printer have to do in order to create this level by level all the way up until we're complete. After becoming familiar with the native slicing software, many people choose to go on to another software, many of them free, that does has more flexibility, more options, more choices, more ability to dial in perfection in your 3D printing. I'm not there yet. I'm still using the native software from Snapmaker, uh, which is called Luban. And I found it to be more than adequate for me to be learning with this. In fact, it's fairly intuitive to learn with. You're going to get to the point though, where you're going to say, I want to print my own models. I want to make my own stuff. I don't want to be bound by just the things I find from other people. I'm not going to kid you. That's hard. There are a lot of free 3D modeling softwares online that you can find. Some of them very entry level and some of them very, very advanced level and very few in between that I'm finding. <laughs> That's the challenge for me. Here's something that I created um, for a, a, a board game that my, my kids and I like to play. I wanted to create something that would contain each individual player's gameplay tools, and so I printed these little boxes that would hold these things. One of the great things about that is as you and I learn how to create things, we can expand the Thingiverse. The universe is expanding. And create a larger repository of 3D models for people to have access to. When your baby arrives at your home for the first day, you're gonna be thrilled and petrified. I was so excited to see these enormous boxes arrive from Snapmaker to begin the assembly of my Snapmaker 2 A350, which I have to qualify is not only a 3D printer, but it's also a CNC machine and a laser engraver. It slices, it dices, it splices your multimedia data. Well, it'll even Julian Prize. Trying to learn that aspect, I've not even touched the laser engraver or the CNC machine yet. Watch for further videos on that one in the future. Snapmaker came with uh, really clear instructions and walked me through how to assemble this. The caution that I'll give is this, take your time. I was really over anxious. I was so excited to get this baby up and running. I made a few mistakes. Bed holder that the printing bed lays on um, looks fairly similar either way. And I put mine on upside down.
but I didn't know it until I couldn't get the bed leveled, I couldn't get things to work. And with literally hours of frustration, I had to go back and look at it and found that I had put it on upside down, which made a big difference. The moment I flipped it back upside down, it still didn't work. Because once again, I found another error where I had put the stabilization bars three quarters of an inch forward into the next hole. Take your time. Take your time, settle in. Join 3D printing communities online. They're a huge help. I immediately joined several Facebook groups and forums online Welcome. about 3D printing and specific to my 3D printer as well. And I found the people to be gracious, kind, funny, helpful, and very patient. In addition, get yourself a mentor. I've been so appreciative to my friend Nate Sanders, who's been uh, willing to answer my, my texts, my phone calls, my FaceTime videos, and even come to my place and take a look at some things with me. In the 3D print community, no one is mum on, on giving advice. In fact, quite the opposite. You're going to find lots of help. Your 3D printer will probably come with a filament like this. It will come vacuum sealed in a plastic bag, and it will have inside of it a desiccant. A desiccant is something that helps absorb moisture. Filament does not like moisture. Fortunately for me, I live in Colorado where things are dry. It's dry. Blisteringly dry. Now that's really dry. I purchased this large Tupperware that has a seal on it underneath. It's a rubber lip that seals closed and it clips closed with pressure. And I keep my filaments in here and I keep in here all the desiccants they come with, as well as other desiccants that I have found. Um, I just toss any desiccants in here so that they continue to absorb. But you wanna keep these things dry and clean. Because if they're not, what happens is they don't move through the printer clearly. I learned this as I had one of the filaments that I put through and it started popping like popcorn. Popcorn. And, and just shooting off little bubbles and I immediately discerned that there was too much water in the filament. We'll have another video on how to resolve that. If you, have a dry, if you have a moist filament, it's not ruined. You can do something to fix it. I've already started collecting a variety of filaments, and it's not enough. I want more filament. It's just never enough. Never enough. I do my purchasing on Amazon. Most filaments fall in about $21. They're not terribly expensive and that's for one kilogram PLA filament, which is a form of plastic. Most PLA filament, it's the cheapest, easiest to work with, and huge variety of different options. Most of it is made from plant-based um, products, and so they tout that it's more degradable than other filaments, biodegradable. Some will have wood chips and fibers in it that'll look like and smell like wood as you're printing, like Sasquatch, for example. Some will be shiny. You can have silk or super shiny ones that just produce a fine finish. There's gloss, matte, there's some that have sparkle in them, some glow, some are rainbow. There, you'll look online, there are multitudes of varieties. Each filament's a touch different and may demand just a minor, minor adjustment in your printing because it's a different product, one from another. But those adjustments I'm finding are very, very minor. Just as newborn babies make noises that are unfamiliar to us, and it takes some getting used to, but they're very natural. Same thing with a 3D printer. 3D printers make some noise. And it's good to become familiar with the noise of your 3D printer. Um, the pulleys, the gears, the drive uh, screws, and so forth, that as they begin to work. Mine, as it began printing, started making uh, what I would only, can only interpret as R2-D2 noises. <laughs> and it was kind of fun to hear it working. Owing to the fact that 3D printers are not silent, know that you're going to have to put your 3D printer in a living space that is probably away from the main traffic of life and probably not in your bedroom when you're trying to sleep. Pay attention for uncommon noises. As I began printing, I heard a noise of kind of a grind. What was that ruckus? Uh, what ruckus? I heard a ruckus. And kind of a, a popping that I wasn't familiar with and it didn't sound really natural and it wasn't a sound that I'd heard. Come to find out it was actually my brand new spool of filament that was still somewhat tight on the roll and when it would pull the new filament through, it would pop as it was pulling on the spool. There was no danger, there was no problem with it, it was just a different noise. And one of the things you can do to make sure that your uh, printer is still running properly, even when you're not present, is putting on a camera of some sort, uh, a Wi-Fi camera that will monitor your printer while you're away. 
you can both see what's happening as well as hear what's happening. Watch my other video about the WISE camera that I purchased and installed, which has been fantastic to monitor my, my printer while I'm away from it. And actually really fun. It helps me keep my eye on the printer. It's my baby monitor, let's be honest. Make sure the first thing you do once you've assembled this thing is to put it on a stable surface. No! Ah! Knowing that the 3D printer has moving parts on the on the X and the Y and the Z axis, we need to make certain that wherever we place this thing, it's stable, that the movement's not going to throw it off or that it could fall off. You wanna make sure that you're keeping your babies away from this baby, whether it's your children or your pets. There are moving parts on here that could hurt your children or pets and it could also damage the 3D printer, as well as the fact that there's hot this raises to some pretty elevated temperatures to be able to melt the filaments and work on this thing. You're going to have prints fail. What's even worse is you're going to have prints fail that have been printing for 25 hours or 30 hours, and then they're gonna fail. It's frustrating. Watch my other video where I will purposefully create errors that will cause my prints to fail. Whatever you do, don't follow me. I'll share with you some of the most common ways that cause prints to fail so that you can avoid doing them. I acknowledge I don't know a lot about 3D printing now. In fact, the more I learn about 3D printing, the more I'm learning that I need to learn about 3D printing. Don't be afraid to take the challenge and begin the learning process. I warmly congratulate you on the new arrival of your baby 3D printer, and I hope that you will have a lot of fun as you begin in this learning process. Don't be afraid to fail. I failed. Why do we fall? Once again, I'm Jared from DIY with Confidence please make a comment below and uh, click that bell so that you can receive notifications of my weekly videos that are coming out. Till next time.